Good morning, fellow saints and sinners. That's the way one of my old Sunday school teachers out at Christ Presbyterian Church in Phoenix, Timmy Bonsall always began whenever she was leading worship, she would say, good morning, fellow saints and sinners. What a wonderful day to remember that. This is All Saints Sunday, the day we remember that we don't walk this road of faith alone but that we stand on the shoulders of siblings and faith that have gone before us. Some of them never known to us, others of them so dear to us. We'll join in our liturgy in just a few moments where we have an opportunity to remember the names specifically of those who have died at, that are members of our congregations within the past year, but also other names that you have sent us, and there'll be a time for you to just speak out names in your own homes, wherever you may be. But today is indeed a good day for us to gather and worship. I hope you remember to set your clocks back, and so you're extra refreshed today, I know, to celebrate with God, to talk with one another. So I encourage you throughout worship service to use the Facebook chat button that is there to just say hello to friends, to share prayer blessings or concerns that you may have, to say an amen, to speak out whatever God is moving you to say as we worship today. This is just one way that we stay connected, even if we can't be sitting next to each other in the pew. So friends, let us come and gather today. We join in our litany of remembering the saints of God. Join with me as you read the bold printed parts in the litany today. We remember the great ancestors of our faith, from Abraham and Sarah to Paul and Phoebe. Ancestors of faith, we remember you. We remember the prophets and the priests, the ministers and teachers who have taught us the way of God. Teachers of faith, we remember you. We remember our grandparents and parents, aunts and uncles, those who have gone before us in our lifetime. Family of faith, we remember you. We lift up the memories of children and grandchildren, brothers and sisters, husbands and wives, and parents whose lives ended too soon. Those close in our hearts, we remember you. We lift up to you, O oh God, the names of those we have lost from our church family in this past year, and others we've lost throughout our lives, knowing that they are with your heart forever. As we read these names, we will pause after each name to ring the bell, to remember, to pray, and to give thanks for their lives. O oh Lord, we remember these, the saints of our lives, the witnesses to your glorious presence and resurrection. Mike Max, Jean Bonet, Caden James Bellin, Jean Bellin, Charles Freudenrich, Anna Mae Freudenrich, 
Freudenrich. Terry Freudenrich. Daniel Gazinski. Donna Gochi. James Farmer. Margaret Farmer. Lloyd Hecker. Stephen Huffman. Barbara Kent. David Koenig. Doris Kruger. Thomas Lysen. Marion Morgan. Ben Miller. Danny Miller. Judge Harold W. Miller. Bar Ponish. Sue Scarda, Judy Sobush, Mitzi Stalson, Sharon Clark, Marissa, Ruth Bader Ginsburg. John Lewis, all those who have died from COVID-19, and all these other names we lift. Let us continue our litany. We celebrate the lives of those we have named, O God, and we lift up many more names in our hearts throughout today and all of this week. Family of God, we remember you and we honor you. We know you are with us in the spirit of worship and you will not be forgotten. We give thanks, O oh God, for all who have gone on to join with you beyond this life. We trust in the hope of the resurrection and the promise of new life in Christ and know that in our grief and celebration, O oh God, you are with us through it all. And we are not left alone. In the name of Christ, whom, lo whom loves and lives forever, we pray. Amen. Friends, let us continue our time of celebration with singing that old familiar song that reminds us that no matter where we go and travel in this life and life eternal, that we do indeed have a friend in Jesus. <laughs> Thank you.
And thank you, Julie and Kayla, for singing and playing. And it's beautiful to hear the flute this morning, Julie. Thank you. Let us come now to this time of confession to remember that God is gracious and merciful and knows our needs even before they reach our lips. Still, though, we engage in confession admitting to God all that rests uneasy upon our hearts. We do this not only for ourselves, but on behalf of all the world, for we are confident of God's love. So now let us join our voices together and let us make our confession to God. O oh God, our God, creator of the stars of night, Forgive us when we forget that the darkness and light go hand in hand, that the suffering of another is our suffering, that the joy we know is not to be hoarded, but to be shared, that just as light warms and energizes us, so darkness calms us and gives us rest, that there are those who still live in shadows of fear and grief, and that we are called to be with them in the dark and to bring the light. We thank you for day and for night, for darkness and for light, for the strife and for the joy and for making us whole. Let the people of God say with one voice, amen and amen. Friends, we come as God's called and forgiven people, knowing that we are made new creation in the waters of baptism. Wherever you are now, know that God's love reaches out to you. You are never alone. You are always forgiven. Together, we are God's beloved community. So rejoice in these waters of baptism. May they renew you now and always. Let us sing our celebration song 
of joy, that great song and call to prayer of the Gullah people, Kumbaya. Let us prepare our hearts now for God's word read and proclaimed. Let us pray. Holy Lord, we come seeking your truth in the midst of a world filled with fake news. Help us to hear the truth as we listen to your word read and proclaimed so we might be filled with hope and to share it with all the world. Amen. Our scripture this morning comes from Paul's second letter to the church in Corinth, beginning with the first chapter. We read these words. We do not want you to be unaware, brothers and sisters, of the affliction we experienced in Asia. For we were so utterly, unbearably crushed that we despaired of life itself. Indeed, we felt that we had received the sentence of death so that we would rely not on ourselves, but on God who raises the dead. God who rescued us from so deadly a peril will continue to rescue us. On him we have set our hope that God will rescue us again. As you also join in helping us by your prayers so that many will give thanks on our behalf for the blessing granted us through the prayers of so many. Let the people of God say, Amen.
Absolutely beautiful, Dolores. We always appreciate your gifts of singing with us. Thank you. Well, here we are again in week two of our sermon series, Fake News. Things we think are in scripture, but are not really there. So this week, I want to ask you and just a few questions as we begin. And if you're watching on Facebook and you want to type your answers in there, that's fine. Maybe at home, you're just going to have a big whoopee when I say some things. Have you ever had a bad day? Well, I'm pretty sure all of us have. Well, and have you ever had a bad day that turned into a bad week? I'm sure many of us have. And have you ever had that bad week turn into a bad month? Some of us have. And have you ever had that bad month turn into an incredibly bad year? Unfortunately, a few of us have. There are times in life that we know that things just reach that certain point where we feel completely beat down discouraged. We don't think we can ever move on anymore. We just want to crawl into a corner, turn into a ball and just rock, or maybe being able to crawl back up into our mommy's lap and just go back to when everything seemed to be able to make good with a little hug. Life is rough. And it's during those times that well-meaning friends and family, they come along and they try to comfort us and they try to encourage us. And inevitably, somebody utters these infamous words, well, don't worry, God won't give you anything more than you can handle. God won't give you anything more than you can handle. That belief, the belief that God won't give us more than we can handle is not biblically true, and it's certainly not theologically helpful. So let's call it out for what it is. It is fake news. It's not in the Bible. It's not part of our faith. So, but we have to ask ourselves, where, where do we get this idea from? It's not really in the Bible. If it's damaging for our faith to believe that God will never give us more than we can handle, where does it start? Well, most people get to it from another letter that Paul wrote. To the church at Corinth. We read from the second letter today, but this comes to us from the first letter, the 10th chapter, and it has this simple verse in chapter 10, 13. God is faithful and will not let you be tested beyond your strength. Okay, so it sounds like, well, see, there you go, preacher. Apparently, it's not fake news. It is in the Bible. Well, that's great if we're allowed to cherry pick scripture and just pull out, you know, seven or eight words in the Bible anytime we want to justify what we're saying. But that's not faith. That's not what we people of faith do. So let's explore a little bit about what Paul meant in that particular verse. That verse is not really saying what we think it says, for Paul is talking about temptation not suffering, not crushing, depressing weeks and months and years. Temptation. For particularly at that point in the city of Corinth, Paul is addressing Christians that are being tempted to turn from Jesus back to the idolatrous lifestyle because all their friends are doing it. 
So yes, folks, here it is in the Bible where God, Paul is addressing peer pressure and not from kids in the schoolyard, but from adults. The culture around these people in Corinth is wanting to make them turn and go back to worshiping idols so they can be like everybody else. And Paul says that God gives you the strength to resist that temptation. You don't have to turn back to idols. God's faith, God's grace is sufficient for you to resist the temptation. So that's what it is all about when we read in 1 Corinthians, God is faithful and will not let you be tempted beyond your strength. The issue is not about enduring suffering by getting tough, sucking it up and dealing with life. No, it's about a specific issue of temptation, of peer pressure. And Paul says that God will surround you and you will be able to be faithful. So that's where I think the idea comes from. But we've translated that into any time somebody is stressed out and we just say, oh, don't worry, God won't give you more than you can handle. People who say that haven't taken the Bible seriously. In reality, life is often more than we can handle. Just ask a survivor of the Holocaust death camps or someone who's lost their spouse in a tragic accident or a rape survivor or the person living with a chronic physical or mental health issues. They will tell you that the pain, that the suffering is often more than they can handle on their own. All throughout scripture, people are handed impossible tasks that they could not possibly handle on their own. Moses freeing thousands of Israelites, leading them through the Red Sea, guiding them for 40 years. That's not something Moses could handle on his own. David slaying the giant Goliath is not something David could handle on his own. Joseph being sold into slavery, but yet becoming one of the most powerful men in Egypt and forgiving his family is more than any human could handle. Daniel in the lion's den is more than any human could handle. Mary becoming a pregnant virgin is more than any person can handle. These stories are all over where God has given people things beyond their ability to handle. All of these heroes of the Bible were given more than they could ever handle on their own. And so what did they do then? instead of accepting these little platitudes from people all around them that are really implying if you, you just don't have enough faith. And we talked about that one last week. Instead, they accept the fact that they can't solve this problem or relieve their suffering or change the situation on their own. They accept that. And instead, they rely on God to get them through. And in the process, they have showed that what is impossible to humans is possible with God. We can say that even Jesus had days when life was more than he could handle. The night before Jesus was crucified, he cried out in prayer in the garden, I am deeply grieved even to death. In other words, Jesus was praying and said, I can't handle this without you, God. I'm ready to just give up and die right now. Even Jesus needed to rely on the presence of God 
in order to handle things. You and I are given more than we can handle all the time. If we could handle everything on our own, then I don't know what the whole point of Jesus' incarnation, his teachings, his death and his resurrection mean if we could all just do it on our own. If I dig back in my brain to my church history, I believe that that's one of the heresies of the early church, to believe that we don't need God. So no, we can't handle it all on our own. And yes, we have things in life that overcome us. I'm not even sure I like the word that God gives us. It's not that God is giving us this stuff as if it's some, some sort of a, a, of a divine test of some sicko that wants to just see how much we can put up with before we break. No, God accepts that life itself is hard and we have to endure. In the passage we read this morning from 2 Corinthians, the Apostle Paul makes it painfully clear that he and his traveling companions were overcome by the sufferings of life, that they were crushed, and they assumed that they were left for dead. Yet God raised them from despair. They could not do it on their own. They could not handle it on their own. They could not have survived on their own. Only through the love of God could they endure and thrive. So yes, friends, despite all the well-meaning sayings that you might even find on a Hallmark greeting card, God does indeed give us more than we as humans can possibly endure. And that's what brings us to our need. That's what allows us to cry out to the creator, to the redeemer, to the sustainer, and says, help me, O oh Lord. It's then that we lean into the arms of God. We rest in God's arms. It's then that we must surround ourselves with this great cloud of witnesses, not just those currently in any faith community, but those who have gone before us, who now live in heaven. That great cloud of witnesses by the grace and the presence of God is what allows us to endure all the things that this earthly life will bring us. So I tell you, and I invite you to make these your own mantra, that yes, we experience more than we can handle all the time, but we never experience more than God can handle. We experience more than we can handle all the time, but we never experience more than God's people can handle when they work together. We experience more than we can handle all the time, but we never experience more than grace and love can handle. Amen? Amen. Fake news is all around us, but the truth of God is always with us. Let us join in singing a hymn, My Prayer for You.
If you haven't already sent in whatever prayer request or prayer blessings that you have in the chat books, please go ahead and do that now. We're recording all or collecting all of those so we can truly lift them up at one time in our prayers for you. And also I invite you to remember if you haven't already to that we extend the table god's table from church to home and so go ahead and gather around you some cracker or bread some grape juice some fruit juice whatever liquid you may have so that we can come together and break bread and share the cup even though we are far away we shall do it together Friends, now is our time of offering. I invite you to think about something that you can be doing in your life this week. Something, some way that you can give of your faith to our community. That might be through a monetary gift to the church. That might be a gift to another nonprofit in the community. It may be a gift of your time where you're setting aside your precious time to help others. It might be setting aside 10 minutes every day to lift up our congregations and our community in faith through prayer. Whatever ways that you find to give, give. 
return God's generosity. Mail in your offerings to us. Go to our website and give there. Let us know right now in any way that you can the ways that you will choose to support the ministry of Christ here in Manitowoc or in your community, wherever you may be watching from today. We thank you for your generosity. Let us now come to this time where we will break bread and share the cup. Let us join our hearts together in prayer. The Lord be with you, my friends. Lift up your hearts to the Lord, for it is right that we offer all glory and praise and honor to God. Most gracious God, we are well aware that all too often we have tried to do things on our own. We have tried to believe that you have given us the ability to solve every problem, every crisis on our own. Humble us now in this time of prayer and worship to realize that we need you, that we must rely on you. For it was you who in the beginning of time created all that is, it was you who scooped up clay and molded it and breathed and created us and said that we were very good. It was you who never stopped loving us, even when we turned from you, even when we forgot the graciousness of your ways, even when we built towers to make a name for ourselves, even when we forsake you, even when we chose a human king over you, even when we turned our back on the prophets, even when we wandered after other kings and monarchs, you did not stop loving us. You always called us back. You always told us that we were worthy, and that you loved us. And then when the time was right, you took on flesh and you became one of us, O oh Lord. And we praise you for that, that in human form, you showed us that love is possible, that forgiveness is possible, that grace is possible. You called us and showed us what it means to live in a community that cares for one another is willing to make sacrifices for one another but yet still we the world the empire rejected you they hung you on a cross and left you there for dead but your love never ended and again when the time was right your love burst forth and through all victory of once and for all over evil and death, you burst forth with new life. And so now, O oh Lord, we come before you as a community of faith, offering our prayers. We celebrate all those in our midst who are celebrating birthdays and the days surrounding today. Particularly, we celebrate Joan Geraldson, whose birthday is today, John Tierpuck, whose birthday is today. We also celebrate Glenn and Kay Gazinski on their anniversary today. But Lord, you are well aware that our times are not just times of celebration. And so we pray with Jill for her parents and for her friend Robin, for her brother who still grieves the death of his daughter. We pray for Sarah's friend Marilyn who continues to battle COVID. We remember the 500 plus children orphaned on our border by policies that we have allowed to take place. 
We remember Anne's sister and the surgery she had this past week. We remember Lynn's friend who died from a heart attack. We pray for healing for Judy Beck. We pray for the families who are grieving right now. We pray that for Laverne Hecker who grieves Lloyd's death this past week. We pray for Mike who Neil needs healing. We pray for Andrea's friend Peter who's battling cancer. We pray for Amber, for her grandfather who fell ill. We pray for a peaceful election this coming week and a peaceful aftermath. May you change the hearts of those exhibiting increased violence and hatred as we near as we near that sacred day of this country election day we pray for all those who are living and enduring cancer let them rely on you to bring whatever healing is needed for jan for lane for jan for tom for dennis for Kim and for Paul. We remember all of these names and now in these moments of silence, we lift up to you, O oh Lord, so many more prayers that are upon our hearts and minds. Hear us as we speak out their names to you, O oh Lord. In the stillness of these moments, Lord, I hear your rustling of the wind creaking through this building. It is your breath in your spirit that moves across all of creation. May it enter us anew today. And now, O oh Lord, Praying with the saints of every time and every place. We pray to you our prayer, our family prayer, using whatever words are most comfortable to us. Father and Mother, holy. Your kingdom come. Your will be done. On earth. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins. As we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial. And deliver us from all evil. For the kingdom, power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Friends, let us now come together. Let us remember on the night in which our Lord was betrayed, he took a loaf of bread, he gave thanks to God, and he broke it, saying, take, eat, this is my body given for you. matter after the supper our Lord took a cup and he gave thanks to God and he said take and drink from this cup this is the cup of my blood the covenant the forgiveness of sins life eternal take 
and drink. Therefore, all of us, brothers and sisters, let us now take this time, wherever we may be, in our homes, our dining room tables, our living room, sitting in bed, huddled in the corner on the floor, gathering alone or with families, we are all together. And so we take this bread and we drink from this cup. And we remember that love has been given to us. Let us pray. Most gracious God, thank you. Thank you for binding us together, for allowing us to put our faith above our fear, for knowing that even when we worship apart, we are still together. We thank you that we have faith over the fear that not meeting together will break your church. Thank you, Lord for being present in our life so that we may indeed endure all the things that are given, not because we are strong enough, but because you are strong enough. And as you now live in and through us, send us out into the world to be your beloved people. Wherever we go, let us proclaim love and truth, love and grace, peace and justice. Amen. Several things going on in the life of our congregation that we invite you to participate in. We have a three week adult course. And as I look at these dates now, I believe that my third date might indeed be Thanksgiving, um, which was not um, an intent, but oh, maybe those are Tuesdays. I can't even remember now, but if it is Thanksgiving, don't worry, we'll reschedule that. And if I'm just having a brain freeze at the moment, don't worry um, about that. So we're having a three week course on gospel justice. You can join at 10 a.m. or 7 p.m. Right now, our goal is to be doing this um, all online with Zoom. You can do that with your computer, with your smartphone, or with a regular telephone. Just let us know and we'll help you get connected. Our confirmation class will be starting soon. Um, and if you're in seventh or eighth grade, or if you're somebody that maybe is beyond that age, um, but this is still something you wanna do, that's okay. Just reach out and we will make something happen as we learn about God together. Our community dinners are still happening Wednesday, five to six. Your presence is always helpful. Just let us know you're coming. There's prep work on Tuesdays that's done as well as things on Wednesday. Reach out to us and we'll let you know how you can safely be a part of this essential need in our community. We remind you that before and after worship, we gather on Zoom. That link, I believe, should be putting in your um, in the chat box soon that you'll be able to link that. If not, go at the very top of the page, and there is our weekly in there. You'll see the opportunity for you to link that or to call in for that. We have children's ministry on our YouTube channel. Our daily devotions are um, Monday through Friday on YouTube and Facebook. And we also have a Zoom Bible study Mondays at noon. So you can find out and pay attention to what's going on on our Facebook page, MCM United, or our YouTube channel, Manitowoc Cooperative Ministry. On YouTube, if you go ahead and actually subscribe to the channel, which is different than just liking it, you'll actually, and then you have a chance to click a little red bell and you'll actually get a notification from us when, um, um, whenever we post something new. But remember, friends, we are here for you. You can call the church office or email the church office or myself, and we will get back to you as soon as we can. But just knowing that you are praying for us is an incredible gift. So thank you. Now is our opportunity to remember that we are indeed set out to serve one another. 
So as is our custom here, I invite you to put one hand with your palm out, the other hand in the air, reaching out. One, this hand reminds us we receive God's blessing. This hand reminds us that we are part of giving God's blessing to the world. So friends, hear the good news that you are loved, you are worthy, that God the creator has made you, that God the redeemer has loved you to the point of life eternal, and that God the sustainer surrounds us and upholds us now and forevermore. Amen. Now let us join in singing our closing hymn. Friends, may you have an awesome and an incredible week. We are bound together because God has bound us together. So go in peace to love and serve the world. Peace and love now and always. Amen.